Welcome to this week's edition of Outdoors Online, a weekly webcast produced by the North Dakota Game and Fish Department. I'm your host, Mike Anderson. My guest this week is RJ Gross, Upland Game Biologist here at the Game and Fish. RJ, we have a lot of season Upland Game seasons coming up here shortly. Uh, let's start with sharp tails. Yep. Uh, sharp tails kind of back up a little bit. Um, looking into this fall, well, last last fall harvest was down about 20 percent, and then as you know, we had that bad start to the winter, record snow, record uh, bad temperatures, and they didn't come through as well. The spring survey that we do for them, count them on the lex, that was down 25 percent compared to last year. So, and now not just sharp tails, but all upland birds were going through a bad drought right now, and if just so people know. Um, usually you associate bad production with wet, cold, um, but drought is just as bad, if not worse, just because those first 10 days when those chicks are hatched, if they don't have the insects, uh, just survivability is really low. And without moisture, the insects, they just don't hatch, they don't complete their life cycle. Um, so this fall, kind of looking at sharp tails, you know, we're running our, our late summer roadside counts right now. Uh, we do that through the end of August, and then early September, I'll take a look, see what we got. but. People can expect, you know, lower brood size, not as many um, chicks out on the landscape as compared to last year. But hunters will still be able to find birds. Oh yeah, you just you might have to walk, you know, a couple extra pa pastures working on your cardio this year. Explain your roadside brood surveys a little sure. bit. How many transects do you guys have? Yep, our our roadside counts we have. It's approximately a hundred of them that I have every year, uh, give or take a few, and. Uh, Biologists and different cooperators are girl. They go out it's the same routes as crowing counts. So it's a 20 mile transects. Um, you go out early in the morning, you know, half hour before sunrise at sunrise. Um, you drive real slow, 15 to 20 miles an hour, and you go the whole way. And every time you see a, bro a, a pheasant or any upland bird, you get out, um, go in the ditch, stomp, stomp your feet, clap your hands, make noise. You can flush up everything that's there, make it count. Uh, if there is a brood, you see how many were in the brood, and then. Uh, I haven't judged the size. Um, just kind of, that's kind of to see how they're going along um, as far as production, when about the hatch, things like that. Um, and, let, and yeah, we do those through August um, till the 31st. And then uh, I'll summarize everything when, you know, first week of September. Uh, stuff that's been coming in, um, it doesn't look as good as years past, and that's to be expected because of the drier conditions. I'm sure we'll get, you know, smaller brood size. Um, less chicks on the landscape. Okay, well let's move on to partridge. How are yep. the partridge numbers doing? Uh, partridge, uh, I, w I won't know that until, again, until we're done with the surveys, but they like drier conditions, and I guess just in my travels, my brood runs, I've been seeing good, good, uh, number, good number of broods and good brood size, you know, 18, 19, 20 chicks. So I'm hopeful at least one of my upland bird species will do well this year. Well, speaking of that, how about the rough grouse up in the Turtle Mountains? Yep. Uh, their numbers are okay? Yeah, you know, and actually rough grouse are kind of interesting to North Dakota. We only have a couple populations in the Turtle Mountains and then up in the Pemina Gorge. Um, they're hard to survey, you know, up in the woods, uh, but we do um, drumming counts. And in the Turtle Mountains, they're up 55% this, this year. Um, we unfortunately weren't re able to survey in the Pemina Gorge, uh, just travel was and couldn't do it up there. Um, but uh, people up there, they've said that the brood, they've run into a lot of broods and they were good broods. Um, and they're, they're very cyclical. They go about on a 10 year curve basically and uh, we're finally going up on that curve. Uh, they, it's, they're very difficult um, to have a good population in North Dakota just because they need different size stands, the young, the old, um, stands of the aspens up there. And it's just, it's so far away from everyone. We don't do as much management as we want, but it, it was good to see in the surveys this spring that they're on the uptick finally. One thing uh, hunters can do is, is uh, mail in, we have a program, wing survey program, where yep. you can mail in your, your uh, pheasants, your sharp tails, and your partridge. Tell me a little bit about this wing survey program. Yep, yeah, it's really important to us. Uh, any upland bird species that you harvest, uh, you can get wing envelopes that you send in to us. And we use those basically as an age ratio, kind of a double check of the, the production from last, last spring. Um, and if you sent in a wing last year, we send uh, the packet out to you again this year. And then from the small game survey, any uh, partridge and grouse hunters that check that they hunted will send those, uh, will send you guys more wing envelopes. And then 
If you want to volunteer, there's a link on the website that you can go to. Just tell us how many envelopes, packages you want, and we'll send those out to you. And make sure when you send them to us, you have to mark the date of harvest and the county, or else we can't use them. We don't know when, you know, if you don't, we don't know where they're from, when they were harvested. RJ, let's move on to the fall turkey. Uh, how are their numbers doing? Mm -hmm. um, they're kind of like, I guess, every other upland bird in, in North Dakota this year, um, except for the Badlands. And the Badlands are actually, um, it's almost near record uh, production for some routes that I've seen. Um, a lot of that can be just because it's kind of, they're more the Merriam's traditional habitat and they're, they're just doing well. People are saying that there's turkey um, broods running all over the place. That's good. Um, in the east, it's not as good, and that's just because it's basically a habitat thing. A lot of their habitat is just disappearing. We're still doing uh, the brood surveys for that, though, so I'm hopeful uh, better news will come in. Not too much of a change from last year, I think, and a lot of it was more shifting. I shifted a lot more of the licenses out to the west as compared to the east. And uh, okay. the fall fall season, you know, that's our population control season that we use. So you can you can shoot either a hen or a um, a tom is compared to the spring where it's tom only. So basically I shifted the tags out to the west just kind of, you know, landowner tolerance will probably be a little bit lower this year just because the number of turkeys out there will increase. Thanks RJ. Yep, thank you. Fall turkey hunters, including gratis applicants who are interested in applying for a 2017 license must submit an online application through the Game and Fish Department's website at gf.nd.gov. Paper applications are not available this year. Applications are also accepted at the department's toll-free licensing line at 800-406-6409 for a small service fee. The application deadline is September 6th. As per state law, a resident who does not want to receive a fall turkey hunting license but would like to accrue a bonus point can purchase a point on the application for the same fee as a turkey license. For RJ Gross and the rest of the staff here at the Game and Fish Department, thanks for joining us this week. We'll see you again next week.